glioblastoma often begins in the nerve tissues of the adrenal glands. Now these are two adrenal glands, one on top of each of the kidneys in the back of the upper abdomen that are present. For children with low risk neuroblastoma, the 5 year survival rate is higher than 95% and children with an intermediate risk, the 5 year survival rate is between 90 to 95%. However, for children with high risk neuroblastoma, the 5 year survival rate is only around 50%. Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I am going to discuss about managing neuroblastoma in individuals. Approximately half of the children with neuroblastoma, that is a childhood cancer that develops from the immature nerve cells, have a form that indicates a high likelihood of recurrence. New findings that are published online in the Cancer Journal showed that a bridge therapy that is between the induction and consolidation treatments may benefit patients with this high-risk neuroblastoma condition. To examine the benefits of this bridge therapy strategy for patients with high-risk neuroblastoma whose cancer was still evident after their induction therapy, the researchers examined data from 201 patients who were diagnosed with this condition who had residual disease after completing the induction therapy. Patients were treated in three groups with different approaches. The three groups included no bridge therapy prior to the consolidation therapy, bridge therapy prior to consolidation therapy and an additional post-induction therapy without the consolidation therapy. The investigators were interested in evaluating if the addition of that bridge therapy protocol prior to the consolidation with stem cell transplant improved the event-free survival or the time after the treatment that cancer did not come back, that is recurrence did not happen or rather get worse in patients with residual neuroblastoma at the end of the induction therapy. Among patients with stable cancer at the metastatic sites after the induction therapy and those who received bridge therapy had significantly improved event-free survival compared with those who directly underwent the consolidation therapy. Patients treated with the post-induction therapy who did not receive any consolidation therapy, that was the group 3 people, they experienced inferior event-free survival than with patients in groups 1 or 2. However, those in the group 3 with no signs of metastasis following the post-induction therapy had significantly better 3-year event-free survival than those with residual metastatic disease. Hence, it was concluded that the bridge therapy may definitely benefit children suffering from high-risk neuroblastoma. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.